so ultimately man is taught in philosophy. And a nation of people that hasn't got any thought pattern by which it can be identified is non-existent. And to the extent the black man remained for many years without presenting anything as representing his own thought pattern, he was regarded as non-existent in the committee of human races. But we have now come to offer to every one of you Gordians as our own contribution to the diversification and enrichment of the totality of human culture. Over the years we have remained borrowers economically. We are beggars, we are borrowers. Technologically, we are beggars, we are borrowers. Ideologically, we are beggars, we are borrowers. In religious philosophy, the black man is a beggar, he is a borrower. And naturally, he who goes a borrowing, goes a sorrowing. You can never claim equality with the people from whom you very much borrow. That is the reason why we are presenting to all of you Gordianism and asking you to rally around it as an umbrella to which you will come together when the interest of the black man is at stake. We are the only race in the world that hasn't got any ism under whose umbrella we can rally when the interest of the black man is at stake. The Jews rally to Judaism and under the banner of Judaism they fight for that, for the interest of the Jews. The Mohammedans, I mean the Arabs, when the interest of the Arabs is at stake, then they rally to Mohammedanism and use it as an instrument for fighting the cause of the Arab world. And when the Europeans have their interest at stake, they run to the umbrella of Christianism and then put up the cross of Christ and sing. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Then they sing that war song under the banner of Christianism and then go to fight the cause of the European world. But the black man hasn't got that. That is a tragedy. But we have come now to offer you Gordianism as an umbrella to which you can rally to fight the cause of the black man when our interest is in jeopardy. And you know we have in every ton of human interaction the interest of the black man in jeopardy. And having, unless we have this, unite ourselves under a banner, it will not be possible for the black man to make an impression for which he will be respected anywhere on earth. Because it is not easy for people to get united unless you are united in a common ideology. We may be different in language culture. We may be different in geographical dispersions around the world. We may be different in every manner of uh, uh, appearance. But if we can be able to have one core thought pattern, one core ideology holding us together, then it will be easy for us to achieve very greatness because it is said under the dominion of an idea which possesses the mind of a people. The nation soon confounds the arithmetic of the mathematician and achieves a success out of all proportion to that means like the Saracens had done in history. It becomes necessary that if the black man must have to come up, fight for his cause, and then win that cause. We must have to achieve unity under a banner of a religion, which is the foundation of human behavior. And that unity, that banner, is Gordianism. That is what we have been going to all the world to present. And I'm asking you people, as I have seen you, my brothers and sisters, to come and rally around the Gordian religion because Unless we are able to go and make a contribution, we cannot be able to other people. It is a tragedy that we go and belong to organizations, religious organizations, who don't regard us as slaves. Christianity depends the devil black. Islam does not regard you as equal. And there 
is no reason why we will continue to serve in organizations that has no respect for us. Will we continue to remain in an organization that represents us as the very incarnate of devil? Painted black. So we really need to think again. Because the problem of the black man is the problem of lack of courage for cultural freedom. We have got political freedom everywhere. We are struggling for economic freedom. And those of you in Africa, in, in, in America, many of you are very economically well placed. We might say you have achieved economic freedom. But what the black world has not been able to achieve is cultural freedom. We continue to remain glorified servants in the cultural vineyard of other races. You may be a bishop in Christianity. You may be um, uh, whatever you may call yourself in Islam. But they do not regard you as anybody serious. They regard you nothing, not more than glorified servants in the cultural vineyard of Europe's Christianity and Arab's Islam. When I read about many of our African-American brothers who took into Islam here in America and then become Muslims, I begin to wonder. I read a new encyclopedia which was published here in America. I read there and they were trying to talk about the population of Muslims in America. I think they said that there are not more than 10,000 Muslims in America and that among them are African Americans. And that the African Americans are not regarded even as true Muslims. And I said to myself, here are African Americans running away from discriminations in Christianity and seeking to run away to something else they could call their own, made the mistake of going to Islam. Because Islam is not an African country. I mean, it's not an African traditional religion. Islam is from Arabia. And Arabia is not from Africa. What the African American needs is what will give him spiritual link with the land of his ancestors. And we feel that it is only a synthesis from African traditional religion that can give you the spiritual link you seek with the land of your ancestors. And that is what Dorianism has come to offer you. I spoke to a number of bishops in Nigeria when the University of Nigeria held a, a, a meeting and they wanted a symposium and they wanted to talk about evil traditional religion and Christianity, the future of both of them. All the bishops, evil bishops, gathered at the university. And then Sir Francis Sibia, a former governor of Eastern Nigeria, he was the chairman of the occasion. And when I presented my paper, I told them whether you like it or not. All of you are bishops with your crimson robes and caps. You are no bigger than glorified servants in the cultural vineyard of Europe's Christianity. And a time is going to come when the black man shall achieve such degree of self-realization that he would not consider his being a member of Christianity safe. And I said that. And that is going to be what will happen. One day, all of you as African Americans will not, will achieve such real self-realization that you will no longer accept to become members, to stay members of a religious organization that holds you up as the very epitome of the devil and paints the devil black. This has been happening in Africa until 1962, I wrote a letter to Pope John the 23rd in my capacity as the spiritual head of the Italian religion. And then I told him, I canonize some Africans because anywhere you see, the, all the inmates of heaven, they are white. God is painted white. Angels are white. Michael is white. Jesus is white, Mary is white, and Ananias is black. All the criminal characters of the Bible are black. Then 
I wrote to the Pope in 1962, I said to him, I have canonized our own saints. I canonized Mbono Jike, who was uh, a Nigerian nationalist leader, and who was very serious. In fact, we called him uh, the Boycott, Boycott, Boycott King. He was the person who introduced the question of uh, the black man coming back with his cultural root and was living it in practice, changing the clothing that the white man gave him, a black, I mean, dye and suit. He changed it to African dress and made everybody now go to office with African dress. So we canonized him for that contribution and he became Saint Mbono Dike. Then we looked at Marcus Gap. Here is a person who decided in his revolt against injustice, he felt that the best thing to do is to transport physically the African Americans back to their homes in Africa. But the first effort he made was chaotic. And then that was dropped. And for that, we decided to canonize him because he was making a contribution to the objective of the Dodian religion, to give dignity to the black man and restore him, if not physically, but spiritually, to the land of his ancestors. So we canonized him as a saint. Then I wrote to the Pope and said, here we are, we have canonized uh, Bono Dike. He is now Saint Bono Dike. We have canonized Marcos Gavi. He is now Saint Marcos Gavi. These are our own candidates for heaven. So you take note of that. And in my opinion now, you might begin now to change the colors of the inmates of heaven and mix them with black because we are there now. You know, it worked. He was torn to the quick. He felt that nationalism has gone into the field of religion. And if nothing is done in response to our action, we might become so bitter that we will drive Christianity away from that country. And so, in one fell swoop, he had to canonize the 22 Ugandan martyrs who died for the cause of Christianity in Uganda in 1898. But instead of stepping them up smartly into heaven, what they did was that they left them in the purgatory, for the, for in the fridge of the purgatory, so that their skin will be bleached white before they will be considered fit to go and take their seats among the other saints in heaven. And so, because of our action, the Pope in 1963 smartly, in one fell swoop, canonized all the 22 Ugandan martyrs, among whom was Saint Mulumba. So this is how we got that. And later on too, I came here in 1973, that was the first time I came. My arrival to this place, my coming to America was organized by Dr. Ira Harrison, who is a medical anthropologist of Bihari Medical College. They came to Nigeria and visited me. And I dreamed that through our uh, system of uh, socialization, they thought that I should come and sell it to African Americans. And so they organized my tour in 1973 April. When I came down, touched down at the airport of Nashville, he had organized some pressmen. Then they asked me, why are you coming here? I said, I have come on a civilizing mission to America to tell the people of America, the, uh, give the people of America the message of a new religious civilization from Africa expressed in philosophical balance as Koreans. And in the Tennessean, they give, gave me a very big back page headline a black man on civil exiling mission to America. I received publicity. I addressed people in Mehari Medical College, yeah, I mean, uh, Mary, 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 yes, Mehari Medical College, Vanderbilt University, Fisk University, Tennessee State University. Then I came to, oh, I mean, to uh, Michigan here. I addressed people, African Americans, and the university community. I addressed them uh, in Oakland University. And I addressed them also in uh, Michigan State University in East Lansing. Then I went to uh, the Interdenominational Theological Center for the Religious Heritage of the Black World. And after I had addressed, then I received all sorts of publication. In fact, here in uh, Detroit, I was given publicity, interviewed in Detroit News, and I was made to appear 
on television here uh, by Lugogi show. And in fact, he wanted to embarrass me. And that the, uh, the former mayor of uh, Detroit appeared on the same uh, program with me. After he had been interviewed, I was interviewed. And in trying to introduce me, um, Lugogi said, here is the head of African witches. Well, that is what they think of our traditional religion. They think it is witchcraft and nothing more dignifying than that. So I was introduced just to embarrass me, you know, before the television viewers of uh, America. But then he made a mistake of his time because of his life in that introduction. Because he led me now into discussing the metaphysics relative to witchcraft. And he was lost when I began to discuss witchcraft in Africa. So this is what happened. And that was how the world took note. I mean, this uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, I mean, uh, the World Conference on Religion and Peace, Dr. Omar Jack, that was how he took notice of me. And when I went back, he wrote a letter and asked me whether I could attend a meeting of the World Conference on Religion and Peace with an organization of world's major religions holding consultative relationship with the United Nations, seeking world peace through religious insight. Then I accepted the invitation, and I went to the United, I mean, to the, uh, to, to, to the Catholic University of Louvain. There I interjected Gordian religion and the philosophy of Gordianism among the 13 religious isms that have been controlling human behavior since the past many centuries. I interjected that as the 14th religious ism, a contribution from Africa, in order to correct this image and then tell the world that a black man has arrived with his own contribution to uh, diversify and enrich the totality of human culture. This is something which is beautiful. I would ask every one of you to support. Because as long as you continue to vibrate in the religious culture of other people, so long you will remain, remain psychologically enslaved, mentally enslaved, right. And you will never admit anything in the community of human race. If we must regain dignity, the only thing we have to do is to rally around the banner of Gordianism as something we can call our own, something spiritual to us, something that will give us the link we see with the land of our ancestors. While you cannot be transported back physically to Africa, the only connection that will give you is this spiritual link with the land of your ancestors. Over the past many centuries, we were misrepresented by the white people that all our religious behavior was, be I mean, uh, was uh, uh, pagan. And every shrine was regarded as religion. Then they see every shrine, they say that is the religion of the black man. And because of the multiplicity of the shrines, they say the black man is non monotheistic, he's not monotheistic, but polytheistic. But that is not true. The shrines occur in the mystic dimension of the metaphysics that supported and sustained traditional life. They are not religions themselves. Like you will talk about Oshu. Oshu is not a religion. It's an excuse for festival. And you talk about Shango. Shango is not religion. And we call Oshu in Igbo, we call that Ifun. That is Meme in the European metaphysics. That is Meme. It is not religion of the black man. It occurs in the mystic dimension of the metaphysics that supported and sustained traditional life in Africa. But not religion, because religion in theology is defined as, is, is difficult to be given precise and apt definition in religion. Because of the many and varying individual experiences it lends. But it is accepted in theology that when a man acknowledges the existence of a supreme being, and accepts his dependence upon that supreme being, religion has become a factor in him. Therefore, in the matter of religion, fundamental religious philosophy says religion is man and God. Not man and a lesser God, but man and the supreme God. There is no pastor. So when you introduce, within this theological definition, if you introduce a pastor between man and God, you are no longer doing religion, you are doing cultural um, imperialism. That's exactly what it is. Christianity was built up by Emperor Constantine. As an 
an instrument for the perpetuation of the domination of the world by the Roman Empire. That's exactly what this can Then the Arabs themselves, introducing Mohammed between man and the Supreme God, they are no longer doing religion. They are doing cultural imperialism, raising the hand of their brother, their own hero, and then say, you have got to worship this one. It is only through him that you can go to God. And by this, I mean, a glorification of their racial heroes, they are trying to put to the world that they are superiors. So that is not religion. A fundamental definition of religion. Introduction of any buster between man and God is no longer religion, but cultural imperialism. So as it were, what we are presenting to you is something which is true religion. Man and God, which is God the answer. That is the religion of your African ancestors. So when you talk about Shangwa, talk about Ushun, talk about Timo talk about uh, uh, all these other there are differences to history. There are instruments for social control. There are uh, uh, the, 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 the foundation of traditional festivals. There are the foundation of traditional calendar. And there are the background against which traditional, uh, 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 traditional uh, medical men base their uh, practices on the principle of mysticism which use, uses image. And in using image, it enables you to concentrate and gives you in a situation environmental serenity. And when you concentrate your mind, then it will be possible for you to suppress the lower self of carnal desires and then give revelation to your higher self, which is one and the same level of vibration with God. And that is exactly what he says. It is not the religion of the people. But when the black white man who doesn't understand, he sees the shrines, then he runs up and then says, we are worshippers. They have the festival, they say, we are worshippers. For instance, in your land, you have more in it festival. When they see people doing Moremi at festival, which is remembering the heroism of Moremi, who sacrificed his daughter, his son, uh, her son, in order to uh, save the, 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 his Yoruba people, our Yoruba people from molestation. And they celebrate it. We have the same thing in our own home. And we call this one, um, uh, we, we, we have a name for that, that kind of a festival in our own home. That is Akinkuru Ebuwa. It is in respect of our own history when one old man, an Ibibio man, was chasing our people from uh, Aru and then down to Ugwabela. We killed him there and we got the magic that he used to put in his mouth and we put it in a shrine. Every day we hold a festival to remember that. And when the white man comes and sees us doing festival, they will come back and then say, we are worshipping God. It is no God worship to us. Religion is man and God. And you don't need to go to any shrine to speak to your God. Because God is within you. You carry God within you. Your African ancestors understand it. I have produced papers. We have our reverend here. I've given him some of the papers. Reverend Saladin. Good luck to us. We have now been able to come here and set up the Godian religion. In, Af in America here. And I would want you African Americans and the Nigerians who are here to rally right that round and build it up as something that will hold the African Americans together in their struggle for civil rights. That is what we have brought to you. It is so very important that this is done because unless we achieve cultural freedom, it will not be possible for us to get anywhere and claim equality with other races. And in fact, the message we have, I may have spoken something disparaging of other religions, but we do not like it to disparage other religions. Because the essence, the content of uh, the mission, the new civilizing mission that the black man is going to give is love. And I would want Claudia to bring me these papers. These papers. There are papers which are, can, can you bring that to me? It's Gordian tract number one. 
the message we are telling, uh, sending to the world in order to end religious quarrel in the world. Because today religions have matured themselves. And they have told the world that the law that they preach cannot be lived. Because of false concepts. All of them, all religions are the same in the absolute. They believe in the same God, the existence of the Supreme Being, and preach the same morals. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. But they mess it up, make it impossible for free people to live it by false concepts when they claim exclusive truth. If you do not belong to my religion, then you are not going to see God. You will fall into hell. And when they present that, because you don't accept it, if they kill you, they don't have any remorse for it. No conscience stricken. They are not conscience stricken if they kill you. And then, but Gordianism has come with a message, which is the essence of African traditional religion. And we have put it in a tract. And we say, love is the highest religion. Any religion which cannot make its members live in harmony and tolerate of members of other religions is no religion at all. And that the fighting which is going on ravaging the religious front, everyone else, there's just one story, that just now the world has no true religion. And it is the vacuum that Gaudianism, the religion of the African ancestors, has come to preach, to live love, to preach love and live love. So I give to all Christians, Chris, can you, uh, this building. That's our reverend. Then you take it and give to those who want it. You raise your hand, particularly the press. There are two of them, Gordian tracks one and two. You give them in press. So, in that paper, which we are circulating to rewrite human concepts in the field of religion, we say, before God, no religion is smaller. No religion is greater, no religion is bigger, no religion is dearer, no religion holds exclusive truth. The only religion which before God is dearer, better, and holds exclusive truth is that religion which does not kill any person, any of God's own creation on the basis of loving and worshiping God. That is what this thing is telling you. And we have been uh, distributing it. There is no religious leadership around the world that hasn't got this. And so you can make much of it in the newspaper. And I would call on our reverend to read the creed of the Gaudian religion, which is the gospel of Gaudianism in caption, so that you will be able to appreciate the spirit of the Gaudian religion and its mission which will amount to a new civilization as prophesied by Oswald Spengler. A new religion, a new civilization shall come from Africa. And that civilization is a civilization of spiritual balance. And spiritual balance promotes peace among men. There will be no bitterness anymore. That is what we have come to sell to humanity. And will you read Reverend uh, Saladin, the creed? of the Gaudian religion. So that looking through the creed of the Gaudian religion, which encapsulates in the gospel of Gaudianism, you will be able to get sold into the philosophy and spirit of the Gaudian religions. Well, when you join it, you will know exactly what you are joining. May you read. The creed of Gaudianism. I believe in the almighty God of heaven and earth. As my source of inspiration, strength, and as my protector. I believe in the universal brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of one God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie. And in respect and obedience to elders, just laws, and in retributive justice. I believe that every human being, consciously or unconsciously, looks up to something above him as a source of inspiration. And that that something.
one thing is the Almighty God. I believe that the Almighty God made worlds a paradise of happiness for humanity. 